All right, so the last thing I promised we'd do is containerize in Docker. And this was actually extremely straightforward. So I'm not going to demo it, not going to demo this live, but I'm just going to make sure that you know how to do this if you need to. Um, I literally ran Docker init. Um, it asked what language I wanted to use. I said Rust. Um, it, it asked what port I was exposing and suggested 3001, I, which was kind of handy because I was right. So I selected 3001. And then the only two changes I made were to stop me having to remember to put the database URL in as an environment variable. I actually added it into the Docker file. You don't need to do this. In fact, in production, you probably shouldn't. And I added one line to the automatically generated binds. I added mount type bind source migrations just to ensure that uh, the two-stage compile also has the migrations folder when it gets there. Because what Docker does is it builds the first stage with the official Rust um, builder um, builder Docker system, um, which is a Debian slim with everything you need to compile Rust, builds the program, then it pulls the result the result artifacts out and uses that to build a, a pretty small 80 meg um, Docker file containing our application. You can you can get smaller than that. I didn't spend a lot of time trying to optimize it. I was just happy to see that it worked. So then you go into Docker, you build uh, build your um, Build your container, start it up, go to localhost 3001, up comes the UI. You have a working Docker system, and because you use Docker init, you've got the beginning of <clears throat> everything you need to start deploying out to a Docker swarm or um, with a bit more configuration in Kubernetes if you want to. All right, so that so far so good. We have a nice, shiny, working um, CRUD system. And built from the ground up. And you'll notice that we are 41 minutes into the stream. And so in 40 minutes, um, I was able to show you all of the functions that are there. It actually took me just under an hour to write the whole thing from scratch um, on my little on my little MacBook. Um, easy to do. Rust is pretty ergonomic for this, really doesn't get in your way. There are crates that can automate some of this, but I wanted to. I wanted to teach the principles, make sure you understand what's going on before you start diving into the way that, um, into ways to uh, make it even quicker. Um, so we've got we've got ourselves a database layer, we've got a database model, we've got a REST API, we've got an HTML JavaScript view of it. So how resource intensive is this? And when it's mostly idle, with just a few requests, mostly me clicking on it, um, adding, removing books, and similar. Um, Docker claims that we are using a whopping 1.95 megabytes of RAM. And that I I didn't believe that, so I pulled this up on a couple of Linux boxes and checked. And there is a very short burst at the beginning, but overall it's using almost no memory because the in-memory database is absolutely tiny. Tokyo and Axum are both uh, um, very slimline and really won't start using resources until you start hitting it with requests. And so for a lightly used service, you can probably stop here, no more optimization. We're hardly using any RAM. You could have you know, thousands of these if you, if you wanted to on a um, production server. You could probably even have hundreds on the little, um, Mac, on the little uh, MacBook Air that, I'm, that I tested and deployed this on. So I pulled up a handy little load testing tool and fired 500 requests a second at it just to have a look and see how this is going to scale. Once again, I'm on my little MacBook Air, so um, put this on a real server and you should start to see much, much more impressive results. But um, yeah, I managed to peak at 12% CPU usage, which isn't too bad considering I haven't optimized anything. Um, the absolute worst result, um, result latency-wise was at the very beginning, and that's because a lot of initialization in Axum is lazy. It doesn't uh, it doesn't initialize everything until you start looking at it. And so the first the first couple of requests are pretty slow. And by slow, I mean about one, one ms, one microsecond. So really not very slow at all, well within the five microseconds that uh, you need to aim for most of the time before people start to notice. But you know the 50 percent percentile 240 micros, uh, microseconds, that's really good. You know, and if you're a 95th percentile is only 399 microseconds, that's not a lot of variation. Your services are running really quickly, so at 500 requests per second, 
I'm going to say that uh, this service is ready. You can deploy it on a MacBook Air, um, but you'd probably want to actually get a real computer that doesn't power off if I forget to plug in the USB, and it's good to go. So I hit it with 5,000 requests a second, which uh, turned out to kind of break the uh, test tool I was using. But um, hammer absolutely hammering it with that, my uh, little MacBook Air is starting to struggle a little bit. Not too surprising. Um, I'm hitting the uh, Get All Books API endpoint. So every single one of these requests is performing a full table scan, retrieving the whole thing, deserializing it, putting it into a vector, and sending that to the client. So that's kind of an inefficient, um, heavy thing to be doing. You probably wouldn't normally want to do that 5,000 times a second. And, but it doesn't matter because guess what? It didn't crash. I started sending out you know, hundreds of megs of network traffic, processed 213,000 um, requests, every single one of them, status code 200, no errors whatsoever. Um, so the... Uh, Latencies remain really good. While it peaks at a worst case of nine milliseconds, you know, ooh, that's not so good. The uh, P50, the normal, 50% of the time, 192 microseconds, that's great. P90, 315. P95, 539. So we really only in that 1%, which is pretty much during ramp up at the beginning, started to see some latency issues. The rest of the time, we're getting very, very good throughput on a tiny little MacBook. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.